This is the process of going from a rough sketch of a crime scene where all of your measurements are taken down on a piece of paper and everything is labeled either using triangulation, such as number one, or rectangular coordinates like number four evidence and number two evidence are done with. You'll notice that on a rough sketch, we have the perimeter of the room. You need to make sure that you have that clearly labeled. You also have a clear description of what the unit of measure is. Notice this is in inches. Two dots, two little dashes means inches. One little dash would be feet. And then if it's centimeters, you would just put centimeters. So I have that described down here. Notice that all the numbers and me measurement lines are clearly drawn. So for evidence number one, we have a legend down here. Evidence number one was the gun. We would have measured from the center of the evidence to a corner of the room. This is an immovable point. And then you have and then you have that line drawn showing that that's where the tape measure was used and then that was 68 inches. You'd have the center of the evidence to an adjacent corner, in this case the closest one. So you would measure that, you would draw the line indicating where you measured from and to, and then directly on the line you would put to the measurement that it was. It was 32 inches. So this is two sides of the triangle. To make the third side of the triangle you need to know what the measurement of the wall is. We always include where north is so we use this arrow showing that that way is north. You also include the name, time and date of when you were at the scene, the case number, location if you know it, and then the team num teammates if you had teammates. Notice this rough sketch is not drawn to scale. We're going to go from the rough sketch to a final sketch using some standard methods. The first thing you need to do when you're going from a rough sketch to a final sketch is we need to set up the sketch paper. So I'm going to get a brand new piece of paper. This is going to be my final sketch. I'm going to label this clearly that it is my final sketch. I'm going to do marker. Um, normally you would not use marker. We would always use pencil to start, but I just want you to be able to see where everything is. You want to use pencil. You do not want to use pen when you're doing this there are going to be too many erasure lines when you're first starting out learning how to do this. Eventually you can go back over your lines that are done in pencil, you can go back over them with pen to make them more visible. So we're going to include the labels at the top. So name, time and date, case number, location, teammates, and then we're going to include something called scale. So I'm going to write that all up here. Name, time, date, uh, case number, location, team, and then scale. So that's what I need on my final sketch. Now I'm going to be just using half of this paper. In order to go from a rough sketch to a final sketch, the rough sketch is not drawn to scale, not drawn to scale. Our final sketch will be drawn to scale. So step two is we need to determine the scale. To do this, we're going to take a couple measurements. We're going to take the longest side of the room divided by the longest side of the paper space that I have to use. In the room, the longest side was 84 inches. This side here was longer. This is my shorter side. So we're going to take 84 divided by, I'm going to use this length of the paper, so that would be 8.5 inches. So I measure that, make sure, yep, 8.5. 84 divided by 8.5 gives me 9.9. .9. That may be our scale, but let's just make sure we have enough space the other direction. So let's take the short side divided by the shortest side. Shortest side is 72. My paper, I'm only going to use about half of it, so I'm going to go with about 5.5 inches. 72 divided by 5.5 gives me 13. 13 is a higher number. If it's ever in between, um, if it's like a decimal, round up when you're doing scale. Um, so 13 is going to be my magic number for this. This is going to be my scale number. What that means is 13 inches in real life is one inch on the paper. And I'm going to write this down clearly here. Now that I have figured out that, I need to determine the sides of the paper to use as my perimeter. I need to draw my room on here, but I need to make sure it's drawn to scale. So since 13 is my magic number, every single measurement that I took in this sketch is going to get divided by 13, including my walls. So my north side wall, I'm going to include north, my north side wall was 84, 
divided by my magic number 13, that's my scaled number, I get 6.5. So my north wall is going to be 6.5 inches long. My easternmost wall in the real crime scene was 72 inches. I'm going to divide by 13, my magic number, and that is going to give me 5.5. So using a pencil, I'm going to measure 6.5 inches from here to here. This is my north wall. Ideally you would use a T-square to do this to make sure your lines are all perfectly 90 degrees. This is my east and west wall. 5 inches and then again 6.5 inches this way. So now I have my perimeter set up. So that is good to go. The next step is all of your rough sketch measurements are going to get divided by that scale factor 13. This is going to give you the distance you use on paper. So basically what we're doing is we're taking the real life crime scene, the actual real life, and we're going to shrink it down to fit on paper. To shrink it, we need to shrink it 13 times. So all these numbers get divided by 13. So I did those calculations here. So number one evidence was 68 inches to the northeast corner. I divide that by 13, I get 5.2. Number one was 32 inches to the northwest corner. I divide by 13, I get 2.5. So on my final sketch, I need to place number one evidence. So I need to take my ruler and my pencil. I'll go with the northwest corner was 2.5 inches. I'm gonna put the zero at the corner and I'm gonna put a dot at 2.5. But 2.5 can fall in various places. So if I move the ruler around, all keeping the zero intact at the corner, you'll notice that it creates a bit of an arc. So you can make single little dashed lines like that, indicating somewhere along that line is my evidence. You can also take your pencil, put it on 2.5, and lightly drag it, keeping the zero in place, so that you create this arc. I'm going to do the same thing with the other side. 68 inches divided by 13 gives me 5.2, and that's from the northeast corner. I'm going to hold the zero in place and I'm going to measure 5.2 inches. Notice these inches um, are, this is a, um, a standard unit of measure ruler. These are in inches, so each of these little lines is 1 16th, not 0.1. So today you're going to round to the nearest quarter of an inch. So I would put it at 5.25, which is right about here. I'm going to keep it on that line, drag it over, and you'll see when I do that, let me extend this a little longer, You'll see that they intersect. The location of the intersection is where number one would be. And I'll put it my legend over here, one equals the gun. Number one is done. We can remove these lines. You don't need those lines. It, it helps to have a good eraser when you're doing this. The only thing that should be on here is this circle, that number one, and then your legend over here. Let's do the same thing, but this time let's use a rectangular one. Let's use number two. Number two is 16 inches to the east wall. If I divide that by 13, I get 1.2. It is 40 inches to the south wall. If I divide that by 13, I get three inches. So on my final sketch, we're going to the east wall is 1.2 inches. So I'm gonna put the zero at the wall and 1.2 inches on the, around to the nearest quarter inch. It could be there, but it could also be here and all along here. And these are all 1.2 inches from the east wall. So what you could do, just like before, you can hold your pencil on 1.2 and just drag it down. That's saying somewhere along this line, my evidence is going to fall. Now we need to use the south side wall. 40, degree, 40 inches divided by 13 gives you three inches. From the south wall, it's three inches. Now this is going to help us because we already have a line drawn. So we know that the evidence is somewhere along this line and it's three inches from the south wall. So that tells us right here at three inches where it intersects the line we just stenciled in. That's where evidence number two is going to be. We can erase any additional lines. We could put that number two, I believe it was a hat. And then that was done. That's all you need to do.